ึงหลังEvery single one of them has combined to produce the expert secret roadmap. Australia scores a D minus for physical activity. The USA scores a D minus. There's a C minus for South African school age children. C minus for physical activity for English school children. A D plus for physical activity for Wales, and an F for children in Scotland. And then for Canada, as also a D minus. I've even taken a flight 16,000 miles from Sydney, Australia, to Nashville, Tennessee, to visit with 5,000 PE teachers at the national conference. All over the globe, I've asked the same question of teachers: Do you have a roadmap, a way to navigate our children away from the disastrous and rapidly declining levels of physical activity in the modern world? You know the answer: zero. No one had that no roadmap. So that's when the My Child's Health, 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 Healthy Life Expert Secrets Roadmap was created. Built the Expert Secrets Roadmap and the On Demand Health Course so that we can literally stop the disease funnel within 12 months of applying Expert Secrets in. Inside your school, evidence-based future education. It's here now. Calling every health and physical education teacher across the globe, no matter where you live, bring the expert stickers roadmap to your schools. Together, we can team up, stop blaming society for the poorest levels of physical activity and health outcomes in the history of our world. I promise you this: over 50,000 students in Australian schools already have access, and it's growing every week. Change your school community with the help of the plethora of experts. I will hand over to you when you decide to order the expert stickers road. Map for your school. Happy New Year, everyone! We would like to welcome everyone who is virtually participating in this international webinar organized by the International Association of Physical Education and Sports. We are delighted and happy to have you on this day of great learning. Physical health promotes proper care of our bodies for optimal health and functioning. Overall, physical health encourages the balance of physical activity, nutrition, and mental well-being to keep your body in top condition. To officially start the program, we will have a Buddhist prayer, followed by the singing of Thailand and Philippine national anthems. ปิโยสุปะควะอรังสัมมาสัมพุทโธปิโยสุปะควะอรังสัมมาสัมพุทโธสวัสดิ์ยินะปะควะตัสมุนสุปฏิปันโนยะสัพะควะโตสาวกสัมปุน Amayang p a k a w a n t a n g sa tamang sa sangkan, ine 
หิสักกาเอหิยาตาระหังอารุปิเตหิอาภิปุชยามะสาธุโนภันเตภะคะวาสุจิราปาริณิปุตโตปิปัจิมาจนตาดุกัมปมาณสาอิเมสักกาเรตุขตาปันนาคาระปุเตปฏิคันหาตุอามาคันทิคาระตังหิตายาสุขายาอาระหังสัมมาสัมพุทโธภะคะวะอุทังภะคะวันตังอาภิวะเทมิอืมสตาร์ทแชร์ริงมายสครีนสอวีคันเกตเดอะเพรเซนเทชันอัพเฮียโอเคอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอืมอ
I teach uh, in a high school here in Sydney, uh, both health and physical education, that has many students from the Philippines and many students from Thailand. It's a very, um, uh, we have a big cross section of cultures. So I know something about your culture from the uh, students that I've taught here in Australia. So, uh, so thank you. So now I've done this a few times for different groups across the world and live presentations like this one. Um, is there anything you want to ask me before we get started? And I was going to ask you, is it 40 minutes, the presentation? Sir, questions will be um, given after your talk or your discussion. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Okay. Well, look, let me get into it. I think I've got about 40 minutes. That's the only question I want to ask you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Excellent. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's go get going so we can get through this uh, on time because I've got a lot to cover about my experiences as a health and physical education teacher and particularly my topic today that you can see on the screen. And if anybody can't see it, let me know. Um, but I will give you these notes and some other contents and I'll make available to your organizer the notes from today and some other additional free content. So don't be concerned if I go through this too quickly because I'm gonna make the content available to you, uh, no problem at all, all for free, just uh, on a link that I'll provide to you. So the new science of physical health, let me just talk about this topic. My biggest concern, and I've looked at the, the data of school students in Thailand and the Philippines, and I've compared it to Australia. And when I say data, the physical health standards of school students. So that's both primary school and high school students. And in Australia, we have based, we have not basically, we have a terrible situation with the amount of physical activity that Australian school aged children are actually doing. So where all this kicked off was in 2009, I ended, uh, I, my wife and I had our only child and we were both very late age parents. So I was, we were 45 years old and we had our first child. He's now 11 years old, turning 12 years old, old this year. And I started to con get concerned because of this situation. Let me go across to the next page here on my presentation. This is my a, a picture that you saw in the video of my father on his wedding day at 24 years of age. Just 22 years after this photo, when I was 22 years old, he passed away from the number one cause of sickness and death in the world. That's Australia, Thailand, Philippines, the United States of America, Canada, England, all the same. And that was a heart attack. So not just heart attack, but cardiovascular disease will kill 18 million people around the world this year. Ranked number two is cancer. So my father dies at 46 years of age, 22 years after this photo is taken. Then my son was born 30 years later when I, when I was almost 45 years old. And I started to think as a health and PE teacher, because by that stage, I've been teaching for 22 years and it's been a decade or 11 years since he's been born. I started to think, what is school teaching my son about how to actually get physically healthy? And I looked at Australian students and I started looking at students around the world and I found that the problem was that the results weren't very, very good. So here's what I decided to do. I decided to come up with a seven step formula called the new science of physical health. And I'm going to go, this is what, I, as teachers, and you're probably the same as me, um, depending on how many lessons you've had and what things you've learned as a teacher, one of the most critical things is to be able to give learning intentions before you start the lesson or learning intentions for a set of lessons. So the learning intention might be, we're gonna learn about um, volleyball, we're gonna learn about soccer, we're gonna learn about how, uh, what fitness is all about. What I wanted to do was to create a new brand, I call it a new genre of education or a new brand of education called the new science of physical health. It was to take a whole bunch of different things and boil it down into a, a, a framework, an educational framework that had seven steps. Because here was what my biggest concern was. I'll just go to that one a second. My biggest concern has been this. There, and this is what the new science of physical health is all about. If you want one sentence 
as a description, this is the sentence. How do we take current medical health research, so research by doctors of cardiology, doctors of medicine, doctors of exercise science, people with PhDs like your host, PhDs in um, things like exercise science, exercise physiology, cognitive neuroscience. How do we take all of those people and get their research out of medical journals and put it into the classroom? Because what I found out was after talking to a PhD in cardiology one time, a researcher in cardiology from Detroit in the United States at a university, I found out that the research he had was not getting into the learning frameworks around the world. So I, put, I decided after, thir after 30 years of teaching, two years ago, to begin working on the framework, the diagram that you see on the screen right now that has seven steps. So here's what this, this diagram, the, the new science of physical health has. It has four phases. Phase one, I'm gonna go through today in, over the next 40 minutes is these four phases. What is the new science of physical health? So we're gonna go through that. Then I'm going to talk about and go through fate and that new science, that section has steps one and two of this diagram. So here's the diagram. So professors explained and something you've never seen before called the influencer framework. So steps one and two are in phase one. What is the new science of physical health? Step um, phase two is what changes will happen to your body as a result of using the new science of physical health. And that's step three and four. So that's phase two, what changes will happen. Phase three, you don't have to use this one, but it's a part of the framework. And I know different countries have different access to technology, but you can use the new science of physical health without phase three. But there is some of it, depending on where you live in the countries, will depend on your access to this very, very cheap technology. And I'll talk about that when we get to phase three is use modern technology to your advantage. That's step five and six of the framework. And then the final step is this. I'm, not, I'm going to show people once they transition from being a teenager, because I teach teenagers, the seventh grade to the 12th grade. Once you transition, phase four is when you get older is going to your doctor and proving that phase one, two and three are actually making you more healthy. So it won't be me that shows that the new science of physical health is working for you. It'll be a little bit to do with the technology, but people, depending again on access, will be able to know we have great access to doctors and, and our medical system is free in Australia. But phase four is like, a, it's, a, it's a phase that I teach people so that when they grow from being a teenager to an adult, they will be able to use the new science of physical health and get medical tests from their doctor that prove that they're actually become more physically healthy than the average person who is not physically healthy. So the four phases are designed to get children interested, whether it's primary school children or whether it's high school children. And that's what the four phases are designed to do. And believe me, I've tried this on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students. I've been giving this presentation to um, a whole bunch of different physical education um, groups in the United States of America. And this works really, really well. So they're the four phases. So let's get on with phase one. What is the new science of physical health? Okay, here we go. Part one of, the, of this machine, the, the new science of physical health. I have worked with or consulted with or interviewed and spent time with all of these six professors who are from across the world. So the first professor is Ulrich, Professor Ulrich Wisloff has a PhD in exercise physiology at the, in Norway. And he has a staff of 55 people. He's a cardiologist and an exercise physiologist. You'll hear more about him. Professor Stephen Blair, you'll hear more about him. He's an exercise physiologist in Ohio in the United, United States. Dr. Geetha Raguvia is a pediatric cardiologist originally from India and is now the director of medicine in pediatric cardiology at Kansas, uh, a a Kansas Medical Center, no, Kansas Hospital in the United States. We'll hear about her. Dr. Barry A. Franklin is a research cardiologist from Detroit and Wayne State University in Michigan in the USA. Dr. Kenneth Cooper 
is an eight, 90 year old, this year, 90 year old um, ex, uh, professor of exercise physiology from Dallas, Texas. And I call him the father of the new science of physical health. You'll see why in just a moment. But he, he has the most amount of research of anyone about this topic. And then Dr. Eduardo Sanchez. Dr. Sanchez is the current chief medical officer for prevention of disease for the American Heart Association, also in Dallas, Texas. They just happen to be near each other. Those professors, each of them. So Professor Wisloff, for example, has a, a staff of 55 people, which he's the head of. Um, Professor Cooper, for example, in Dallas, has a staff of over 100 people, of which they now have, a, he is the, he's still the owner of it, but he has stepped away from being the boss of it. So each of those professors has collectively, all six would work with 600 researchers. So they all have over 100 researchers combined, and there'd be over 600 researchers that they work with. So the evidence for what you're about to see is based on these people's work that has been going on now, or some of them like Professor Blair is, and Professor um, uh, Cooper, he's been doing it since 1960. So let me talk a little bit more about, it. I've already spoken about this. The number one cause of sickness and death is cardiovascular disease. 18 million people globally will die of a heart attack or stroke this year. About 80% of those could have been prevented. Another 18 million will have a heart attack or stroke and they will survive temporarily as a result. So that's the number one cause of sickness and death. So I don't know how you think, but this is how I think as a health and physical education teacher, because they're the two subjects that I teach. If that's what I teach, then what I would like to do is I would like to be able to tackle the number one cause of sickness and death and get people interested in reversing that. The number two cause of sickness and death is cancer. Now, both the, all the things that you're about to see in the four phases and the seven steps of the new science of physical health, not only have I used them in classes at school and given them as information for my students to get engaged in, but they drive down the risk, and I'll show you how, drive down the risk of both cardiovascular disease and cancer, and it's medically proven. So here's that, this is the statement that I always say. Let's target our physical activity outcomes so that we drive down the risk from the number one cause of sickness and death. And I think that should be the primary motivating factor. All right, let me introduce you to this person first of all. Here is a slide of Professor Ulrich Wisloff from Norway, from Norway, who leads 55 different scientists who research the, the idea of, not the idea, but they research physical activity and then they convert it into health outcomes. So his work and his whole team at the Norwegian University of Technology as an exercise physiologist and a PhD in cardiology, both of those areas, is he's figured out and he's the world Google Scholar. If you typed in his name in the Google Scholar, so this is an interview that I did with Professor Wisloff. I'm gonna give you access to that for free at the end of this. I'm gonna send you the link and you'll get access to this full interview that I did with Professor Wisloff. So he and his team, are the, he is ranked by Google Scholar. If you typed his name in the Google Scholar, he's ranked as one of the top four researchers in the world who is an expert in physical activity and converting it into health and tracking it. We'll talk more about that as we get through this presentation here. Make sure I'm on time. Yes, we are. Okay, so what his team and he have done is they've taken medical health research where they do things like gas spectrometer analysis and a whole bunch of other things with electrical leads and things like that related to the cardiovascular system. And they've been able to turn it, and I've taken his work and turned it into lessons. So here is three of the major research papers from Dr. Cooper, who started doing all this way back in 1960 and now has a team of over 100 PhDs working on the area of the new science of physical health. So what I did was this, I took those research papers and I took the research papers from people like Professor Wisloff and along with their help, so I've worked with both of these people, is I decided that the work that you see in medical journals is being stuck in medical journals. And all I wanted to do was to take, well, how can I take that and put it into simple lessons? 
lessons that a primary school student could understand. Someone my son's age is 11 or 10 years old, I started teaching him this. How could I take it and give it to high school students and get them interested in this particular topic? That was the whole objective of the new science of physical health. So let's look at here the first, the second step in phase one. It is called something called the influencer framework. I'm gonna ask you a question. Look at the six things on the screen. If you can't see it properly because the visuals aren't coming through, the first one is overweight and obesity. Second one is high cholesterol. Third one is high blood pressure, high blood sugars for smoking and low active heart fitness score. So here's the question that I have about, the, about this particular framework. So this is an education framework that I created. Which of those do you think is the number one factor that causes cardiovascular disease? All of the doctors that I just presented to you at the start have got research of their own, independent, and their team, not just them, but their teams of people who work with them. And they've got research in medical journal after medical journal that proves that there is one of those things on the screen right now that is more influential than all of the others. Now, I'm not gonna tell you the answer straight away. We're gonna go through that as we get to the back end of the presentation. But I want you to start thinking about, out of all these things here, which one, based on your knowledge and based on what you've read in textbooks, because I don't think you haven't, I'm almost certain you haven't read this in a textbook. You've never seen this drop diagram because I created it. But most people will pick one thing in there, and of all the people I've ever spoken to, students and physical education teachers, both here in Australia and across the world, I've almost never got the right answer. And I've never got the answer of why. Is that if you pick that one, why did you pick that one? So the, um, they produced all of this research. This research paper, I'm also going to make available to you at the end of the presentation, the full research paper. In December of 2016, I produced that um, at the end of last year, this graphic, but in December of 2016, 46 medical professors, and they're all down the side of this research paper, they all got together along with four, no, six medical boards. So each board has about 10 people on it. And that's from across the world. And they published a scientific statement from the American Heart Association, which confirmed this research behind the new science of physical health. And that the whole driving question is of the new science of physical health. Cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of sickness and death. Which of those things has the most influence over whether someone in Thailand, the Philippines or Australia or anywhere else in the world gets cardiovascular disease. So there's something that we can do that's more, that is more important than all of the others. So that's phase one. Let's move on to phase two. If you figure out, which I'm gonna show you at the back end of the presentation, which is the most influential factor at lowering cardiovascular disease, what changes will happen to your body? So you you first, what you'll do, quickly go back to this diagram and mention this again. When you know the answer, the scientific answer, not what we think, but the researched medically proven answer to that question, which is the most important, we then go and use that to create changes inside our body. So I created two diagrams. I'm gonna shrink this down just a little bit so it fits in the screen. And these two diagrams are new educational frameworks. I'm gonna talk more about frameworks in a minute. One is called the molecular benefit map, and it's based on the medical research of over 500,000 people across 40 years of all those combined doctors. So if, and here's the answer in the middle of the screen here. Out of those six things that are on the screen, what we know to be true from the medical research is your active heart fitness score is the thing that will cause the most amount of decrease in risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer. So here's what the new science of physical health has proven. And today is just an introduction to it all. It doesn't go into the actual research here. You can get access to that if you're interested in it. So if you grow your active heart fitness score, which I'll tell you what that is in a minute, you will drive down your risk of cardiovascular disease proven by between 20 and 54%.
And it's the number one thing that you can do to drive down your risk of the number one cause of sickness and death. So if you do that, there are things that change in your body. I'm not going to go through the changes right now. So things like you see on the screen there, like endothelial dysfunction, left ventricle volume, stroke volume, cardiac fibrosis, which is something you've never heard of. I don't have time to go through all those individual things on the molecular benefit map, but they are changes that happen inside the human body if you grow your active heart fitness score. So I've taught my students at school how to grow it. Well, and I've got, they're fascinated with it, absolutely fascinated. The other diagram that I created off the work of all the professors is something called the impact quadrant. What is the impact inside the human body of growing your active heart fitness score? Here we go. I'm only gonna talk about the four major things. I'm not even gonna go into giving definitions of that. You can get access to this diagram later on and the full, there's a whole course that goes with this. So the impact quadrant, the, if you grow your active heart fitness score, this metric, which has been found to be the new number one influencer over your physical health outcomes and your risk of the number one cause of sickness and death, cardiovascular disease, you will decrease atherosclerosis. You will decrease your risk of getting arrhythmia. These are all conditions to do with the heart and blood vessels, which cause heart attack and stroke. You will decrease thrombosis and you'll decrease ischemia. They are, you can look those up as health and physical education teachers, the people listening to this, you could look those things up and what those terms mean. But as I said, there's a whole, whole set of uh, resources available after this. I'm going to talk about one thing to do with the, the, uh, the impact, the impact um, map, sorry, the, uh, the impact quadrant and the molecular benefit map. And the thing I'm going to talk about is this diagram here called nitric oxide. Just going to do this briefly. If you do enough physical activity at a certain intensity, and I'll show you how to track that in a minute, but if you do enough physical activity, you release a chemical in your body called nitric oxide. And what nitric oxide does is it gets into the wall of the blood vessel. So it's a chemical that your brain releases from enough physical activity at a specific intensity on a seven day basis. So it happens over a seven day cycle and it causes your arteries to be more flexible. And that is a big part of over here where nitric oxide is a big part of the ischemia part of the impact quadrant. So you can see it fits into that particular part of the quadrant. What it does is it decreases the chances of your blood vessels clogging up. I'm not gonna say any more than that, but physical activity releases nitric oxide, makes your blood vessels more elastic and more flexible, and that decreases the chances of your arteries clogging up. Now, I've got a phrase up here that says new language. My problem with it, what I've seen in school so far, and teachers that I talk to is, that we don't have the language or the framework of health of the new science of physical health. There wouldn't be a child that I've ever taught that's ever seen the concept of nitric oxide. I've taught it to my 11 year old son. He knows that if he does enough physical activity, nitric oxide will be released. And that's one important part of the impact quadrant that raises his, uh, lowers his chance of cardiovascular disease. So all this is phase two. All I've done is just introduce you to these two diagrams because I don't have enough time and I don't want to go over time today, but I do want to give you more resources. So I've introduced you to the molecular benefit map and the impact quadrant. And they are two fundamental frameworks or diagrams of the new science of physical health. More about that later if you want to take up some more information. So let's go into phase three using modern technology. Now, I don't know what it's like to get access to this where you live. I know what it's like in Australia. I know what it's like in different countries, but I have on an Apple watch. Now, I don't recommend those for school students because they're way too expensive for school students. There are some brilliant sensor technologies that auto track some um, to do with your active heart fitness score that are very, very inexpensive. There's a lot of brand new tech I work with, and I'll talk about this in just a moment, but I work with, in fact, I'll just scroll on to here. I've done some work with this person. He is a world leader. He's a professor of exercise physiology. 
He runs the most um, advanced laboratory in the world in Raleigh in North Carolina, Dr. Chris Eschbach. So his name is Eschbach. And Dr. Eschbach is a world expert in sensor technology and, a, and an exercise physiologist about how do we get very, very cheap sensor technology into smartwatches that are inexpensive so that we can begin to track different things. And he and I have done, I've been over to um, his office in the United States. He and I have done some work at Apple World Headquarters together back in 2014. And he is the, the number one expert in the world at making available good, simple technology. Now, I'll say this just, and I said it earlier on, if you don't have access to technology, then what I'm about to tell you is still going to work. And I'll talk to you about that offline when I give you some information, if you want information. So I'll just go through this information now about the sensor technology. And if you don't get access to it and your students can't get access to it, even for, I think, 20 or $30, some of the tech that I know is available that does this job, there is a way to do it without this tech and still use the new science of physical health. Because as a teacher, I wanna make it so that it works for everybody. So what I'm gonna do is one of the things is this. I have a private audio series, so an online um, uh, audio series that is not available to the public, but it's only available to people like yourselves who are professionals. And I can give, I'm going to give you one of my conversations with Professor Eschbach as a thank you to this is one of the things I'm going to give you besides the video interview I did with Professor Wisloff. I'm going to give you one of my conversations with Professor um, Eschbach as an audio. So like a, like a podcast, if you like, but it's not available to the public. It's private and only for people who are health professionals and exercise uh, physical education professionals like yourself. So the big thing is this, Professor Wisloff says, just because you track heart rate doesn't mean it gets converted to health. So people who have Apple watches, and I know students at my school and adults around the world get one of these devices, even the really low um, priced ones, and they don't know what the data means. So Professor Wisloff, is the world expert, and as he says here, this is his quote, heart rate graphs on your fitness tracker don't tell you health outcomes. And he talks about that in that video interview that I'm gonna give you. So what you have to do is, your heart rate sensor must be converted to a health biometric. And that's the work that Professor Wisloff has gone and done. So what he did was this, and I'll give you access to this, once again, if you're interested. This you can get access to for every student that has a mobile phone. If you don't have access to that, a mobile phone, then unfortunately you won't be able to get access to this health software that he's giving, but that he has created. So what Professor Wisloff did was, he created an algorithm, a mathematical formula derived from one of the world's largest health study involving 45,000 people over 25 years. And he converted heart rate graphs into a single number that can be tracked daily using a particular mobile phone application, either iPhone or a, um, a, a Android phone. So it doesn't have to be any brand, it can be just as long as it's got the Android system. So it's got an Android app and it's got an, an iPhone app. So I'm gonna be able to give you access to this so that if someone has a heart rate tracking device, even the low priced ones, which is a lot of great ones actually coming out of China, and they're very low priced and they work really well. And But what Professor Wisloff has done is taken all of the study, years of it with his team and years of it with his work as a professor and converted it into a single number, single health biometric. The problem is though, when people get, and it's and I don't know how prevalent it is in, in Thailand and Philippines, but when people get technology, they look at all this data and they go, oh, for example, I was talking to a lady from Canada yesterday and she tracks calories and steps. And I asked her this question. Here was the question I asked her. What is it about calories and steps that makes you more healthy? And she started thinking, and I asked this of my students too. I've got a whole lesson um, like that I've taught my students. What is it about steps or calories that tells you that you're getting more healthy? And this lady from Canada, who's, in, who's uh, involved in fitness, she didn't know the answer to the question. And my answer to her was, 
I don't think calories and steps tell you a lot about your health at all. They tell you about your activity, but it doesn't tell you whether you're getting more healthy. And my whole topic today, my focus is the new science of physical health. And as you'll see at the end, I'm going to give you something on how you can use this in a classroom. So here's the big thing. Frameworks exist in education for things like maths and English and science. So I use this example all the time. If you, a child at your school that you teach at or your own child and my child in Sydney, so think about children you teach and I'll think about the children I teach here. If I was to ask my students, tell me what five times one is, they'll tell me the answer is five. Tell me what five times two is, they'll tell me the answer it's 10. Your children in Thailand and Philippines and any other countries listening to this, people from other countries and people in Australia will all get the same answer. Well, here's the interesting thing. Matt, that's a multiplication framework. English has frameworks for learning languages and for learning different uh, parts of English. So does science. Take a chemistry table. The chemistry table in your country is the same as the chemistry table in my country and it's standardized around the world. So here's the question I ask you. What is the standardized framework for health data? Just because you can track health data like steps or heart rate doesn't mean it's useful about getting you physically healthy. So that's my big question is, is that how do you go and do that? So I'm going to introduce you to these three things. And the middle one I've already introduced you to, active heart fitness score. Then the, the yellow one on the other side is recovery heart, recover heart fitness score. And the blue one is rest heart fitness score. All of the professors that I have worked with all said to me, those three things, particularly the middle one, active heart fitness score. And I haven't told you how, how you can measure it, but you can measure it in a PE lesson. It's a very simple thing to go and do. And I'll teach you that later on if you want to, if you want to get access to some of my resources. So the number one factor that influences whether or not you're going to get cardiovascular disease, and I'm one cause, of sickness and death is your active heart fitness score. We know from all those scientists that that's the truth today. If you track active heart fitness score and you can do this manually, okay, I'll talk about that offline. What it does is, is it will improve all those things in the impact quadrant and it'll improve all those things in the molecular benefit map. Now I haven't gone into both of those two things in a lot of detail, just the one about nitric oxide, but that's what it'll do. If you improve your recover heart fitness score. It will Im dramatically improve the impact quadrant and the molecular benefit map. And I'll give you an example. Here's mine. This is my one. Look at my watch there. I was doing an exercise. When I finished the exercise, my Apple watch says, now once again, Apple watches are expensive. Children shouldn't necessarily get them unless they've got enough money to. But that, because I think they're too expensive anywhere in the world. But my Apple watch, says after one minute, my heart rate went from 147 and it dropped 43 minutes. I was doing some cycling. That photo is taken out the front of my house on my veranda here in Australia. Then two minutes after exercise, my heart rate dropped by 53 beats, uh, 53 beats a minute, which for my age, I'm 54 years old. That is massively important. And it means that all the things in the impact quadrant and all the things in the molecular benefit map are improving significantly compared to other adults in the population who have, are not able to achieve that and not able to do that. And the final one is the rest heart fitness score is, what is it at night? So last night, when I woke up this morning, I just opened my app on my watch and it told me that my rest heart rate was 64 beats a minute overnight. That was what I averaged throughout the night. The person who has a low active heart fitness score is not physically active, then they will get poor results with the molecular benefit map and the impact quadrant, and they'll have a very high rest heart rate. That's a, those three things are the three things to concentrate on. Those are the three things that are useful data when it comes to improving your health outcomes, which means lowering your risk of cardiovascular disease. And I haven't gone into it in this particular presentation, but also cancer. All right, we're gonna to get to the end of this here because we're almost at 240 and I want to make sure we're done on time here for any questions that people might have. So phase four, this is kind of an option. That's not kind of an option. This is one that I put in at the end of 
the new science of physical health seven step blueprint because I wanted people when they became adults to be able to get proof from their own doctor what it is that they can get improvements in their medical biometrics. So take for example, if we were to take for example, things like blood cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, and your, um, your, your size, the weight that you are. If someone raises their active heart fitness score through physical activity and tracks it, they could go to their own doctor and see significant and blood pressure, see significant improvements in all of those normal medical biometrics. So if you went to a doctor here in Australia, and I'm pretty sure it must be the same in your countries, if you went to a, a normal doctor and said, I want to get a health checkup to see how healthy I am, they would check your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your blood sugar, and your weight, and a few other different things. If you were a person that had used physical activity and tracked your, act, tracked your active heart fitness score through the work of Professor Wisloff and the health software that, that he has, then you would see your medical biometrics be really, really good compared to other adults your same age. That it doesn't matter whether you're in your 20s or your 30s or your 40s or your 50s or beyond, your medical biometrics would be improved compared to the rest of society. And we know that for a fact. So that's where a doctor will be able to prove to an adult when they get go transition from teenager to adulthood that this works for them and that they will see improvements that others don't see. So here's what I did. I'll just shrink that down a little bit. I created this whole thing called, and I, I gave it a catchy title, The Health Secrets Machine. And I wanted to put together some content for people where I put together a, a whole course. And inside the course, I'm going to give you parts of this course for free because I want to say thank you for turning up. So I'll give, I'll give a link to the organizer through Facebook and you can go to that link and then put your email in and then I'm going to give you some free content. That's how it will work. But in, in the course, there's three interactive project workbooks, three video teaching learning sessions and three audio teaching session. Although I spelled the word teaching wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I've got to correct that. Um, must have been a, typed it too quickly and put in two A's. So this is an example on the, on the screen right now of the front page of one of the workbooks. So below this are some activities for you to do as a teacher. And there was also some activities for students. So it's called how to use the influencer framework, lower your risk from the number one cause of sickness and death. So remember before at the start, I talked about the influencer framework, which is the number one cause of sickness and death. This workbook, there's a video to it and some tasks below that will teach you how to actually use the influencer framework. So that's pretty cool. The course also includes the full course. I'm going to give you some of this for free. The course includes the new health tracking software for people who've got access to the mobile phones. And then I wanted to do this. I'm going to give you some of this for free. Uh, these are, um, this is one of my books that I've created. That's my son on the front cover. I've got an audio book version and an ebook version called the, the Five Health Secrets. So I have another book. That, so that's 100, I think it's about 105 pages and about two hours worth of audio. So it's 105 pages. And I will be able, I'm going to give you some of this stuff for free as a part of turning up and saying, thank you very much for turning up. So that's also a part of the course. I might make the audio book available, the ebook, whichever one people want the most. And then I also have inside the course five private audio um, discussions that I've had with world leaders in health and physical activity that I've never released, but I've only released them inside the course. So that's a part of the actual course itself. And, and um, they won't be available in the free stuff I'll give you, but some of the, I think there's going to be two video interviews, one of, and one ebook, and then something else that you'll get um, if you, so if you get the link. So the idea here is this, that, um, I want to be able to give you some things for turning up so that you can learn more and take this further because my work is all about, I do what you do. I teach health and I teach physical education. So when I make this presentation to teachers, my objective is, is I've given you an outline of the blueprint of the new physical, uh, the new science of physical health, but I want you to be able to use it in your classrooms, whether you've got technology or not. 
I want to be able to, you to be able to use it inside your PE lessons because I created all of this from my PE lessons and I, it works really, really simply whether you've got technology and if you don't have access to it, then doesn't make any difference. We'll still be able to get the same results that you would if you had the technology. The technology just makes it easier to track. So with that in mind, that's the blueprint for the new science of physical health. I've gone three minutes over time. I'm now at 2.43. I want to say thank you and leave it there for the moment and let people who want to get more resources do that. And the way that I'll do that is provide a link that I'll post to the organizer. And then all you have to do is click on the link and then get, put your email in and I'll send you the information that I, send that I said that I would send you so that you can use this in some of your classes once you've begun to learn it yourself. So that's what will become available to you. All right, everybody, that's, that's very much where I wanted to leave it. And I don't know whether we have any questions or whether you're just waiting for to get the resources, but I'll turn it back to the organizer and I'll, st I'll stop sharing right now. Uh, Thank you so much, Sir Shane. Um, yes. Those information are very overwhelming, but yes. uh, I know that most of the members and the participants of uh, today's session would really love to have those materials because it would really help each and every one of them on dealing with this uh, new science of physical health. Sure. Because we all know that the most important things important thing in in this life because yes. um yes. knowing that you are uh healthy this health is wealth yeah so yes. we are very grateful to have you and uh, um this would be the part for some questions um sure. with from the members of the organization um now, sharing my computer now sir we will be uh asking our members to you can unmute your microphones or use or utilize the chat box for your questions to our resource speaker and i realize i think you're right i may be somewhat overwhelming that's for sure so i totally understand if it is overwhelming um and uh and but you know there'll be plenty oh we've got some chat questions down here so let me just have a look at this oh some some uh uh different things that people have posted oh hang on i think i've gone into full screen mode accidentally let me just get out of that so i can go back to where that was um that's a nice some very nice comments from people thank you very much for that um if no one has any particular questions because i've given you so much um a very nice i'm just reading the comments now for the first time thank you so much everybody for your lovely comments. It's such a pleasure to be able to share with you from across the, you know, well, we're not too far away from each other, but we are a long way away. Not easy to get to Australia and not easy for me to get to uh, Thailand or the Philippines. One thing I will say is I've used this in 2020 when COVID-19 was at its highest because I got my students concentrating physical activity to raise their active heart fitness score. So I taught them about active heart fitness score, which will be in the free materials. And I used it really, really well during COVID-19. So that's one thing I'll say, this works perfectly for COVID-19 because, and I don't know how prevalent it is in your countries. I know it's been very bad in Australia and it's kind of rising again a little bit here again, but it's not as bad as some other countries. So I'll leave that up for you to decide, but it does work really well. So. That's good. And thank you for, um, that, you know, uh, I think it's Galen uh, for that, your nice comment about it's very interesting. I really do appreciate sharing. And I've done this with lots of different organizations who are health and physical education teachers. And I'm glad, you know, I think uh, uh, King Rodriguez has said that they're very interested. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to um, you getting the link, which I'll post probably about 30 minutes, uh, maybe a bit less, about 15 minutes after we finish the presentation, I'll post the link. And then by tomorrow, I will have emailed you. And if you, I'll, if you don't, I'll also put my email inside the link in case you don't, for some reason, my email goes to your junk box. Um, I'll put my email in there. 
But if you don't get the email by tomorrow with all of the free resources, then please um, email me at the email that's in the link that I'll send and post into to your organizer, your your host of, of your um, your conference today. So I think that's the um, the you know the best thing that I can do to be able to to make progress so that this becomes not just information, it becomes a practical um, uh, tool for you to be able to use with your students. And that's my big thing. Okay, question, what unit or topic do you usually link this to students? If I'm teaching health education, we have a topic in Australia um, that between year seven and even up to year 12, that's specifically related to chronic disease. So chronic disease, of obviously cardiovascular disease and cancer, and our education system has an area for chronic diseases. And I also link it into fitness activities. And I, that's another module that we have here in Australia. And we have another module um, called um, fitness science. So I don't know whether your curriculum has a fitness science module, um, but I link it to those three areas, fitness science and chronic disease. Um, and I can't remember what the second one was, but there's three modules that I link it to. So that answers that, that particular question there. Um, I'm just seeing if there's other questions or just nice positive comments from people, which I really do appreciate. It's wonderful. As I said, I teach students who have nationalities. They, they either their parents were born in Thailand or the Philippines, more Philippines in Australia, in Australia than, than Thai people. Although just to let you know, every single Friday night, I go down, I go down to a takeaway Thai food shop and my wife and I get Thai food and we've done that for the last, I don't know, um, 10 years now because we have Friday night, I have the same Thai meal every Friday night because this Thai restaurant makes this particular meal for me, which I love every night. I had it last night.